This is my 2024 KTM 300 XCW hard enduro build. I almost exclusively ride hard enduro tech stuff. So everything on this bike is placed on there to either give it better performance or protection since um, hard enduro riding can be hard on your bikes with all the rocks and tip overs and stuff. This bike is the best stock bike I've ever owned. The only thing that kind of rivaled it was a 2018 Yamaha YZ250X with its suspension. So I'm talking suspension only. The KYB stuff on that bike was dang good. Um, this stuff is good also. I don't know if I'll have to end up revalving it or not, but as of right now, after two rides and four hours, it's super good. Typically these bikes come way too soft for me and the stuff that I do, but I'm super happy with the suspension. The bike ergonomics feel good. The power is very linear or lazy, if you will. But I bet you if you put it on a dyno, you're going to get a pretty, pretty good numbers, which really mean nothing on the field because, you know, we don't ride the bikes full wide open throttle in third gear from a, you know, idle up to full RPM. But it's probably more that you just don't feel or hear it because it doesn't have that big power band hit or you know you got that exponential increase in the power valve opens but it's more linear so it's getting traction to the ground throughout the whole rpm range so honestly even though it's probably not as noticeable or fun to ride i bet you it helps people get the power to the ground smoother and easier and allows them to ride better even though they might not notice it or feel like they're going faster because it's so linear uh, other than that, the one gripe I have about the bike is the start-stop switch, which is garbage. It's a single switch on the right side. The red switch has a pretty good detent, but the bottom starter does not, and it's temperamental on how you, what angle you push it at. And with a the glove, there's been a lot of times I've been pushing and it's not engaging until I like really get perpendicular to it and push it. So I'll be getting a different start-stop switch. There's three different options at least that I'm aware of. One is the Nihilo Concepts, which offers like the old school, a start-stop combo that's spliced into one plug. So you can just plug and play, take those and off, hook the Nihilo Concepts in. Or Moto Minded or Sick Ass Racing has a combo start-stop switch that look pretty good. So I'm um, not sure which one I'll try, but I'm definitely going to get rid of this one. Other thoughts on the bike? No, oh, it's a good bike. Very, since it's so linear, it is very strong in the mid, it feels like, in the bottom and mid. But, uh, yeah, it's a good bike. I did change the factory gearing from a 1345, which was stock, to a 1249 for the first two rides. And I felt like I was having to switch or click into third gear more than I should have for the type of riding I've been doing. So I uh, just today I bumped it down to a 1248. And if anything, if that doesn't work quite right, but it's going in the right direction, I'll bump it down to a 1247. I'm thinking I shouldn't have to go much lower than a 1247. I've asked uh, several pros what gearing they're running and most of them are in this range that uh, 1250, 1249, 1351 range so i'll be uh experimenting more with that and seeing how it feels so basically i'm just a little bit short on second and first is really low but if i kind of lengthen out second that'll make second more usable and then i'll have to click into third less and then when i really need to get on the gas i can click into third for like big long hill climbs and whatnot other than that bike's good so i'll start from the front before i do that i'll share a couple other things that are kind of internal so I don't forget. I'm running the Evans Waterless Coolant. I've always ran that. Um, between a fan that I added on, I'll show you in a second, and the Evans Waterless Coolant, and then on my older bikes, I always run a 2.1 bar radiator cap. I would never, ever overheat or boil over. Whereas if I didn't have a fan, I would. If, if I didn't have the Evans Coolant, it'd be more often that I would, or less often that I would not if I had the Evans coolant, if that makes sense. So if I had the Evans coolant, 
um, it was I could see a difference. And then the 2.1 bar cap, which I don't know, I haven't even looked to see if they make a different bar cap for these new style radiator caps because they're plastic. <clears throat> Other than that, as far as the motor or the bike, like performance, that's uh, most all I've, I've done. Um, I will throw a shout out right now to Two Stroke Performance at Australia, Dave down there, and then Steve Boardman is the U.S. importer for Two Stroke Performance products, which basically you send them in, you send your ECU to them and they'll reflash it with a much better mapping program. And then they also um, make heads for different bikes. For this bike, they're one to two weeks out. And right now it's September 6, 2023. One to two weeks out before they uh, release their ECU flash and their head, but they've been testing and um, got it figured out. Oh, I met with Dave over in uh, Romania, at Romaniacs this year, and he was there doing a lot of testing and uh, says he has a good map ready to release. So as soon as that comes out, I'll be getting that head and ECU to just help um, correct the mat, the ignition, you know, the power curve, the ignition curve, the map with uh, the increases and decreases in the fueling and the oiling too, and the timing. And then with the head, it just gives that much more. Um, because these bikes are, I think they said they're nine horsepower below the XCs. And that's obviously with mapping and different head and stuff. <clears throat> so, starting at the front, one of the first things I did is threw a wheel weight on because a lot of times when I ride, I ride from the house. I got to ride a couple miles of pavement and it's super annoying to be going down the highway or the paved road, you know, 40 or 50 and just bouncing away because your wheels are out of balance. So, I added this one and that seemed to balance this wheel out. Um, there's been times in the past where I've had to add two or three even four on, um, especially the back tires. <clears throat> but that solved that problem. I'm running the SXS um, lower fork lug guards. So if you want a good bomber solid um, fork lug guard, these are the ones that get, it's made out of that UHMP or V, it's the ultra um, high molecular weight you know, slicker than grease, Teflon type material that a lot of the chain guys are made out of. So I've been running those for about two years now and they really protect your lower fork lugs. Um, right now I have a Tusk Talon. I have never ran one, I'm just testing it out. Um, it's supposed to be kind of a kind of a, a gummy hard and girl tire. And for 40 bucks, I figure at least test it and see how it does. And so far, uh, it's great. It's a 91121 and I have zero issues and um, that for the stuff I've been riding, it's been fine. I'm riding, I'm running a Nitro Moose plushy front tire or front insert right now. It's a used one. It's a little bit soft. I'm going to have to get a bigger one because um, it's just getting old. But as far as the front end goes, I think that's it there. I did safety wire the brake pad pins so you can't lose those you can see there safety wire that one and that one i have uh lost these and i have buddies that have lost those and lost the entire pin and lost their pad so with that you're not gonna lose those pins uh, right now i got the stock suspension but uh, normally johnny weissman down at the ride shop out of phoenix arizona does my suspension. Like I said, this stuff is working really good right now, stock. So I don't know ultimately later if I'll have him um, do some, some valving work for me or not. But uh, on my 23, he installed a set of QIB inserts and revalved my shock and uh, put the bladder kit in and stuff is great. So if you need a good suspension guy, give Johnny a call down at the ride shop in Arizona. I have a tugger front pull strap and have always, well, for the last four or five years, always ran those and they're awesome. They have a, this style for the front and there's a another style you can just bolt directly to the um, triple clamp bolts if you don't want to do the wraparound. What else? Running the Dingo upper fork tube guards. 
you know, like PVC plastic. This they call this the registration wrap one, but it's pretty thick too, like the lower ones and just tipping over stuff. It protects those tubes from getting dented. I have dented tubes before and I've dented lower fork tubes also. But one of those. Uh, also running the SXS vented hand guards. Love these guards. Basically indestructible. They are super, super strong. As a matter of fact, it's not the guard's fault, but they're strong enough where if you hit them just right, just like on any other guard, these will and can break your break or clutch perch. But a lot of times that's going to happen no matter what guard you have. But they're great guards. They're flexible, but strong enough where they're not going to bend back and let stuff hit your hand. Have the ODI bar ends, the bulletproof designs, throttle cable housing. This is a billet aluminum housing instead of the cast aluminum, so it's going to be stronger and bend versus break. Running the Astra, these are the Gemini, I believe. No, excuse me, the Astra Aurora um, bar is 32 millimeter. And I have the ARC Menlon. I don't know if it's how to pronounce it correctly. Memlon or Menlon um, levers, basically the unbreakable levers, both clutch and brake. And I have the nine millimeter clutch master cylinder, which is going to give you a lighter pull and a longer pull, so it's easier to um, find the sweet spot in the when you're running the clutch. I have the bulletproof designs, radiator guards and braces. These things are bomber. I ran these about five years on all my 300s, and they definitely have saved the bacon. A lot of a lot of times these things will keep and help you keep your radiators on and straight, but these things are awesome. All right. Have the bulletproof design throttle position sensor guard help protect that throttle position sensor. Um, running a funnel web funnel web filter. Not gonna show you that. Have the dirt tricks um, dome counter shaft washer. Apparently this washer is made out of a more flexible, springy, strong metal because if you tend to change your sprockets a lot, the stock dome washer apparently can get memory and fatigued and it'll lose its springiness and will stop pressing against the outside of the front countershaft sprocket, which in turn pushes against the countershaft collar and O-ring and you can get an oil leak. Oil leak sorry. So this helps uh, keep that pressure, you know, pressed against and prevent oil leaks. Uh, working around, cross-linked components, swing arm guards. These are the best swing arm guards in the market. You can reach out and get a hold of Devin. These things are awesome and they, in my opinion, have the best mounting um, mechanism out there. So as you can see, there's an L bracket, this piece here, that goes back and is riveted to the swing arm guard. And the L bracket has a hole, so you run your axle adjustment bolts through the hole, and then you tighten your axle adjustment nut against the L bracket, so it keeps it on solid. It's not falling off. And then you can either use the big plastic zip ties, or I prefer to use the metal zip ties for the front portion. And these things are solid. I had 210 hours on my last set on my 2023 300, and they were hammered and gouged and scratched, but they're still holding strong. And I showed them to Devin up at Silver King's Hard and Drill this year and said, hey man, your stuff is good. I got 210 hours on these and they're going strong. So they definitely last. Running the bulletproof designs, uh, swing arm guard, chain guide, support bracket to help strengthen the swing arm guard tabs or the chain guide tabs. And then also on the TM Design Works rear chain guide. Have the Raptor Shorty Billy Bolt uh, Titanium foot pegs. These are the five millimeter down and five millimeter back, and they're the open web design versus the ones that have the support bracket in the middle. I'm not doing that for a weight thing. I just wanted something strong and something sharp. And I was a little bit nervous that they're so sharp that I was going to not like them and have trouble getting off the bike. You know, get my foot off in a in a pinch. And we've had zero issues when uh, I've been riding these last two rides in four hours. Uh, I think I talked about the sprockets already. I was running a 
1249, but I went down to 1248, so I don't have to click into third so much. I'll be trying that and then going down to 1247 if needed. I have the Motion Pro light lock rim locks with the bevel washer, a Nitro Moose plushy rear moose, and right now I have a IRC GX8. I have two rides on it, and you can see the tire wear. These tires are great for the tech stuff for sure. Running a FMF Turbine Core 2.1 silencer. Working around. I threw on, I wanted to try and I threw on a, one of these Aturbis Armadillo silencer guards. It's a metal guard with a rubberized outer on it just to help protect the silencer because every silencer I've had, I've done my bike and there's big giant dents in it. So I just thought I'd try this. And so far it fits really well with the hose clamps and doesn't look bad. So I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm not out there in a beauty contest, but it is practical in my opinion. Um, like I said, I wired the rear brake pad pins, clips, to keep them from falling out. If they do fall out, I don't lose them because they're attached hard and fast to the bleed nipple there. Got the Bulletproof Designs rear disc guard. Once again, the Raptor foot pegs. Clean speed rear brake tip pedal. Um, this is, I don't know how many millimeters, but it's moved back probably about a half an inch, which allows me to engage the rear brake easier without breaking my ball of my foot on the foot peg. So I can, you know, just kind of stay where I'm at and hit it versus breaking it and moving it way forward to hit it. So I've been using that for a couple years. I really like it. I put the KTM factory hard parts trail tech fan on. Keep the bike cool, and I'm running the E-Line carbon fiber pipe guard. I've uh, tested these against the P3s, and as far as fit, and the E-Lines have a much tighter, cleaner, snap-on type fit, whereas the P3s, if you put the guard up next to the pipe and let go, it's falling off without the clamps, whereas the E-Lines, you can get it on there and kind of snap it on and let go, and it stays, and it still has the clamps, so I like these the best. Learn the factory hard parts, um, cylinder, exhaust, manifold, brace. Um, that's just to help support that exhaust manifold. So if your pipe takes a big hit, especially with one of these guards, it kind of makes the pipe a big solid piece, piece instead of allowing it to be dented right in the local area. That um, force can be transferred back to that exhaust flange and can break that exhaust flange. I've never done that. I've heard of people doing it. So I run that support guard just in case. I'm trying to think of what else I did to it. I think that's pretty much it. So far I like it. Runs good. Can't wait to get the TSP stuff on. It's gonna run even better. One thing I did is I filled the gear shift and with some, actually shoe goo, but basically silicone just to prevent mud and debris from getting in there. And that's about it. Anyways, let me know if you have any questions in the comments and uh, I'll try to answer and maybe I'll do a, I don't know, three or six month review and let me know how I'm uh, liking the bike. Oh, shout out to some companies that I really like their products and or they support me. Taco Moto down in Vegas. You can see Taco Mike. He's super dialed in on the electronics and fueling, especially on the four strokes. All the KTM Husky European type bikes. Bulletproof designs and all their protection parts. Great, great products for sure. I already mentioned Johnny at the ride shop. And then um, I think I mentioned uh, Steve Boardman down at South Bay Moto in San Jose, California, who imports and does the ECU flashing for two-stroke performance. He was out of Australia, Dave down there. Um, give John Seahorn a call at Seahorn Extreme Slide Plates. If you need a good hand guards or lug guards, skid plates, they make a rear disc guard and a front disc guard also. Um, using Climb Gear, I love their gear. Talks about E-Line, I like the aero helmets. Um, Funnel web filters and the TM Design Works chain guys and then I like the CD3 crossfire boots.
And then big shout out to Rocky Mountain um, MC dealership here in St. George for helping me with all kinds of stuff. And uh, once again, the swing arm guards, cross link components. And then if you need some good lift straps, tugger lift straps for sure, give them a call. All right, that's it. We'll talk to you guys later.